Okay, so this is our project. We're going to make a new new garden gate. Um, it's 70 inches tall, 34 inches wide, uh, ledged and braced. Um, it's got two 12 inch galvanized steel hinges and um, a keyed Yale lock on it. Uh, the timber we're going to use, this is what we're going to use, it's going to be 5x1 uh, tongue and groove. This is the tongue, this is the groove. And the ledge and braces are going to be made out of this material. This is just 5x1. Uh, planed all round timber. I want to say ledged and braced. What we're actually going to do is create um, two cross pieces. They're the ledges, which are these, and this angled down piece. This is going to be in the 5x1. Uh, they're going to give the gate, the gate strength because they create a triangle. Now when you're ledging and bracing a gate, it's very important that the, um, that the hinges are on the correct side of the gate. So with our gate, this is where our hinges are going to be. We're going to have strap hinges here. We're going to run onto these two ledges here, here. So what we're creating here is a triangle at this point. So that the back at the the uh, non-hinged side of the gate cannot fall because you're compressing this strut. If you were to have it the other way, let me show you on another piece. And we were to hinge it here. This would be the wrong way, by the way. These were your hinges. What would happen is, this is your triangle, and this far end of the gate could fall away. This this could drop here, which is what we don't want, because there's no support here. You're not compressing this strut. So that's what we need to do. We need our brace running in this direction. Okay, these are the timbers we're going to be using for the gate. Like I said, the five inch by one inch V, T and G, and the V stands for this chamfer here. It's like, it, it, gives, it gives the gate a V groove. What you've got, you've got your groove here, and at this side you've got your tongue, and these just mate together. And when they mate together, you can see it creates a V between the two. So we're going to fasten all these together, and this is going to give us a 34 inch wide gate. Now our legend braces, are going to be out of five by one material. This doesn't have the V in, it doesn't have the grooves, it's just straight five by one plain all round timber and they're going to be the ledges and the braces. Okay the next thing is we need to make two cuts on this door, one at each end. First of all we need a, a nice neat square edge on here. When I say square I mean 90 degrees to this side. I'm going to put a line on here 50 millimeters away from this edge. I'll tell you why it's going to be 50 millimeters. If you look over at my saw here, I know that these teeth are 40 millimeters away from this edge, and this is the edge that's going to be against our guide rail. So if I draw a line 50 millimeters away, I know that I'm going to be left with something like a one centimeter piece of timber that I'm cutting off. Another thing to be aware of, when you're cutting through wood, the depth of your blade only needs to be just through the depth of the timber. So you can see there, I've just got the tip of the tooth coming through. That's all you need. You don't need any more. You don't need your blade out here. That can end up being dangerous. So if we just go back, I'll draw our line. 50 millimeters. There we go. Draw our line there. Put our clamp on. Now we're ready to cut. So blade against the guide.
a nice neat cut. Okay, so we've got both ends trimmed to length now. The gate's the right height. We now need to get the gate to the right width. Um, the, the gate is actually 34 and 3 quarters wide, and I think these eight panels together come to something like 36. So we need to trim roughly two inches off. Now, I'm, I'm not going to trim an inch off either side. What I'm going to do on this side, this is going to be the, um, the latch side, I'm just going to take the tongue off, keep the 45 degree angle, take the tongue off. And at the other side, what I'll do, I'll rip roughly two inches off the end and I'll put a 45 degree angle just on there. So that's the next job, rip two inches off one board. Okay, so the gate's now been ripped down along this edge to 34 and 3 quarters, check that, 34 and 3 quarters, um, I haven't put the chamfer on this edge yet and I haven't yet taken the tongue off this edge, the reason being I'm going to do that um, when the gate is finally finished, uh, it's a lot easier to do, it's a lot more rigid and I have a device that I use for standing doors and gates up that I'll show you later. I've made that as well, that'll be a, an interesting little project for you. Um, it's just a device so that you can stand a gate or a door on edge and you can work on it and it stays solid. Uh, it stays upright and stays solid. So, next job, cut the ledges and braces to fit. So that's, that's where we are now. Okay, the two ledges, top and bottom, are going to have um, 15 degree angles put on them. Um, I'm going to do that with this cross cut saw. So I'll just set this up. So, undo the nut at the back, set that to 15 degrees, lock it up. And we're good to go. Okay, so we've got our saw set up with the 15 degree angle. We're going to make our first cut on the end here to give it a nice 15 degree chamfer. If you look down there now, you can see that's a very pleasing angle. It just it just, it just gives it a, a, a nice pleasing look on the gate. Our next cut is going to be roughly 32, 32 inches away. I'm just going to cut past it to start with. So this one now is going to have the same angle cut on it. That's it there. First ledge cut, 15 degrees, 15 degrees. Okay, next we're going to fasten these um, ledges onto the onto the gate. Uh, the ledges are going to be 54 inches apart, so I've centralised those. It's a five inch gap at either end, and we're going to screw them to the gate itself. Uh, like I said, like I said earlier, we don't want any glue on this. And what we do want to do, we want to make. Um, a pilot hole for the screw just gives it a little bit of movement. Um, so what we're going to use, if you look at the end here, this is going to drill a countersunk pilot hole. This is going to be for the shank of the screw. It'll be a number 10 screw. Um, this will go through this uh, ledge piece and it'll just give the screw a little bit of movement in uh, um, if the door should get damp or, or in, in bad weather when it expands or contracts. So we'll just drill through. Okay, 
and there you've got it. Do that at both ends. So now we've got our two ledges on, um, top and bottom. Uh, it's very important that we get this ledge in the right orientation. Like I said before, it has to go from the outside top to the inside bottom. So just so that I don't make a mistake, I put a mark on here, H. This shows us that this is the hinge side of the gate. And over here, top. That way, we're always, we're always going to make sure that we, we get our parts in the right place. Like I say, I've fastened the two ledges on here and here and we're now ready to put the brace on. I'm going to put the brace about one inch from the outside. So I'll put a little mark here, one inch. So if I put that timber to there, onto that edge, put a clamp on that. other side just brought it in by one inch put a clamp on that as well I now need to make this angled cut here it's important that I get this right so I'm going to use this bevel gauge to give me the right angle if I put that on here just move it out till we get the exact same angle lock it up I now know that this is the angle that I need to transfer to my cross cut saw. If we put it here, we'll see that, that is the angle we're going to be cutting at. And this piece will then slot onto the table and be flush with the two braces. We've now got our angle on our um, bevel gauge. I'm going to set the cross cut saw up to that angle. So we'll put that against the back fence and move our table out. So we get to the right angle. Lock that up. Just look down there. You can see we've got the perfect angle. Ready to make our cut? Okay, so now we'll make our cuts. There we see, it fits in perfectly. Nice, smooth, straight cut. Okay, so there we have it. That's the basic outline of the uh, of the gate. Like I said, this is the top of the gate, and it's going to be hinged at this point and this point here. And we've got our triangle. So that this part, the weight of this part of the gate, is compressing this strut here, and we won't get any drop at this side. Okay, that's the end of this video. The next video, I'm going to be showing you how to hang the gate, uh, fixing hinges and fixing the locks, etc. Thank you.